my name is Tobias Leikep. I am a student of electrical engineering. And today we will show you uh, how measurements are done with the 150 ohm method with an EMI receiver in the EMC of IC laboratory. Mm -hmm. I, my name is Roland. I'm also a student of electrical engineering in the master's degree. And for our experiment today, we are going to measure the PC, uh, f five PCPs with different lay uh, layer layouts to, to show what the emissions are looking like over the course of a frequency spectrum. Here you can see the test PCBs we have. And we'll start with PCB1. This one has uh, a clock generator on the bottom that's uh, battery powered. The device under test is on the bottom and it is a inverter chip whose six inverters are connected in series in order to produce more emissions. This cap is rather far away from the device under test and therefore spans a large loop area, as can be seen here. It's uh, quite large. Um, it might not seem uh, such, but it is. And also, as you can see here, the layer stack, meaning how many layers there are. There are two layers, but um, the second layer on the bottom doesn't have a ground plane, and that vi will influence the measurement or the noise uh, generated. So for our first improvement, we are going to reduce the open loop area which will bring the uh, decoupling capacitor directly to, more directly to the device on the test. This will not see that much improvement compared to other me uh, measures that we are going to take. However, it is already, a, it is a simple improvement. So for the next PCB, we do have the PCB number three, and this is most likely to be, uh, provides most likely the biggest improvement. We, uh, this, uh, from PCB2 to PCB3, there is one major change, and that is on the bottom layer, on layer 2, we do have a ground plane. And I will show you this here. You can see there's a ground plane, and now I am also show you PCB2. And for comparison, PCB2 doesn't have a ground plane, and this is very significant, because this uh, measure reduces the emissions by quite a lot. And yeah. And the next biggest improvement are not, uh, would be using a four layer PCB, which is, which is PCB4. Yeah, with PCB4, we are, um, we are increasing our layer stacks by, um, to four. This is also additionally amplified by the, cap, uh, the open loop area being reduced as well. So, this is, in theory, our best performing PCP, and this will earn the quote-unquote final solution for this problem. Our fifth PCP is basically a variant of PCP3, where we can change the coupling capacitor to any values we want. We have two ports where we can, uh, can plug in those capacitors and we will change the values and the position to find the best solution for this problem. So our measurements will be conducted with this EMI receiver. We will connect our PCPs with this cable to, to our 150 ohm networks with our plug here. Then we will take the measurements and from there on out it will be transferred over to our PC. The EMI receiver is connected via a rather old standard, uh, which is called GPB to the PC. Therefore, we do have a specialized, uh, a special PC just for that instrument. And with that, we do use uh, Rode and Schwartz software to get the image that is displayed on the actual EMI receiver. We can just click, go to hard copy and click update. And just like that, the image uh, that is normally displayed on the EMI receiver screen appears also on the PC. And we can save that as a normal PNG image. So for our first measurement, we basically 
measure the noise floor of the EMI receiver. This is done with our cable being not connected to anything. You can see here there is a drop for, for the range up until 30 MHz. From there on it is switching into a different range where we have smaller or larger increments so the measurement doesn't take forever. So first I'm gonna take our open loop PCP, tur um, turning it on and connecting it to our EMI receiver via a shielded cable. So I'm placing it over here so it does, so it is stationary. With this being done, I'm going to start our measurement. So you can see here already uh, along the frequencies that we have a lot of sp a lot of spikes. These are the interferences that we are picking up. So now that we have done the reference measurement that is can be seen on the left, we have also done the first real uh, test measurement with PCB1. PCB1 does have a uh, large loop area, uh, the, meaning the capacitor is rather far away from the device under test. Also, uh, PCB1 does not have a ground plane around the device under test. And this clearly can be seen in the measurement results. It is quite noisy. And another and an interesting thing which can be seen is that the, the very first peak in the spectrum that can be seen is the fundamental of our um, square F, about 3 megahertz square wave signal. The following peaks are harmonics, of course, plus some other noise uh, that can be seen. And now with this information, we can see where we need to reduce uh, the noise, or especially what frequencies we need to target to reduce the noise. And further measurements will show a first um, a uh, what, what a closed loop area does and what an additional ground plane does. Uh, as a small fun fact, during uh, our measurements, the door to, the sh to our shielded room where we do the measurements in wasn't closed. And that's the measurement on the right side. And you can see just before the one gigahertz mark, around uh, or more exactly at 900 megahertz, the or a smartphone who was trying to contact its base station, and after and after closing the door and putting all the smartphones outside with the uh, left measurement where the peak isn't present. So as you can see, it's quite important to make sure the place where you do these measurements doesn't have or doesn't produce additional noise and no noise can come in from the outside. That's why we do have a shielded room. So our first improvement is reducing the open loop area. Although it seems a little bit counterintuitive on first glance, the right side where we have already put the or reduced the open loop area, before it was over 5 dB microvolts and now we have even uh, we have constantly below 5 uh, dB microvolts. So this is not the greatest improvement, but it's still very, very useful. So now uh, we have probably the biggest improvement between, uh, that can be seen between our test PCBs. Uh, on the left side we do have PCB2, which has a small loop area, but now on the right side, PCB3 with even closer loop area and the most bigger, the biggest improvement uh, is now we do have a ground plane on the bottom. And as if you compare these two, two, two pictures, I mean, I mean the, it's clear, it clearly can be seen that the PCB3 on the, uh, the, on the right side has much, much lower emissions on, over the whole frequency range, especially in the higher frequencies. So now, Again, for the next improvement, we are having more than two, more than one ground layer. Comparatively here, you can see on the highest frequencies, we barely have any interferences anymore. However, there is a small area where we have uh, even more interferences, which seems counterintuitive at first, but 
to how the PCP layers interact with the decoupling capacitor, we have another resonance frequency where this emissions in this range are not reduced as much. So we are running into a problem that basically our better structure is introducing another problem. This is why the layer design itself is so important. So in order to determine the best capacitors to put on our PCB, we did uh, the measurements again, but now with a test PCB we have, and you, it's basically a PCB where in place of the decoupling capacitor there are pin headers uh, into which we can uh, put in various capacitors. And for our optimum um, capacitors, we do, did pick one microfarad capacitor and the 100 nanofarad capacitor. And we picked those two values while we were looking at the impedance curves of the manufacturer and we did um, look at, especially, especially at the resonance frequency of these two capacitors and we saw, okay, they do span um, the best, um, have the best span for our uh, needs and those were to target the lower frequencies. And this can be seen when we're looking at the, uh, the P at PCB3, which is, has a fixed 100 nanofarad decoupling capacitor at a ground plane. And then we look at PCB5, which has the pin headers and the two extra capacitors. And it clearly can be seen that in the lower frequency range, the emissions are indeed lower. Like it's, it's not a big difference, but nonetheless, uh, they're reduced. But um, unfortunately, due to uh, the measurement setup or the PCB design for um, like easily uh, switching out capacitors, the, the pin headers did introduce uh, resonance. Uh, the, like the, the, the setup does introduce resonance and the pin headers, the length of the pins does induce additional inductance and therefore we do get, um, due to resonance in the low frequency at, uh, at this peak, uh, is this peak is amplified and uh, due to the inductance we do have some noise and resonances at the higher frequencies. That at least that's what we assume happened. This was a video protocol from two of our students of the EMC of Integrated Circuits Laboratory. Thanks Tobias and thanks Roland for creating this video protocol and also thanks to the IEEE EMC John Hart Memorial Education Grant for making this video possible.